Okay, why don't I start with the script, Henry? Yeah, I'll say it's 403 and I call the meeting to order. Go ahead. Uh, so this open meeting of the town area plan work group is being conducted remotely pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and is being held by video conference. Please note the meeting is being recorded and all attendees are participating by the Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Uh, please be aware other people may be able to see you and take care not to share your device's screen. Uh, let's see. So this meeting uh, will feature public comment if any members of the public are in attendance. And uh, Henry, do you want to do a roll call? Yeah, we can. As I find everybody's name. <laughs> I am here. Mary? I'm here. <laughs> All right, Lee? We're not hearing you, Lee. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> uh, why don't you go through the rest and we'll come back yeah, to you. Yeah, I know Lee's here. Mary Ann? Here. Marsha? Yes, here. Okay. Reagan? Here. Allison? Here. Mickey? No, Mickey. And Liz is not going to be here. I heard from her. I okay. Is, I think Mickey is going to join, but I hope okay. so. All right. Um, could I have approval of the agenda? Anybody got any changes? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. I got it. Very good. All right. Um, could I have approval of the draft minutes from January 21st? Any discussion? I move approval. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? We got draft minutes. Okay. Um, no Mickey yet. I'm sending the link to him in case he's looking for it. Okay. We'll give him a minute. Uh, Lee, did you have any luck with your microphone? No, <laughs> that doesn't look like luck. <laughs> no, Mickey. Reagan, can you start? Yeah, sure. Okay, we'll do it that way then. Already. Uh, uh, just we had a note from Lee saying he will use chat. Uh, Lee, I don't advise that. This is a public meeting, and we don't really have the opportunity to record that uh, commentary in the meeting. So uh, I would not advise using chat. Do, do you have any? Do you want to try logging out and logging back in again? Does it work if somebody reads his comments that he's put in the chat? Um, I, I'm not sure what is permissible there, um, but my first recommendation would be to log out and log back in and see if that corrects itself. Okay, Henry, you want me to start anyway? Yeah, go ahead, Henry. Okay, so Mickey and I had the topic of services and facilities, and um, we hope we've covered what we were supposed to. Um, so I'm just going to read you the recommendations that we made, um, and there may be some that he needs to clarify, so hopefully he'll join. But anyway, we started oh, Mickey, with... Mickey did just join us. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. Just noting for that for the record. <laughs> Mickey, you want to say hello? Yay, hi. hi, everyone. I'm having trouble each, each week getting the right login and password. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I was too. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> 
Um, okay, I was just starting, Mickey, to read through our list. So um, you can chime in uh, as needed. So our okay. first was parking issues impacting residents. And we're talking about all the folks who work in town who seem to use parking um, in the neighborhoods. So we suggested considering uh, requiring resident parking permits in the entire district to prevent town workers from parking on residential streets all day. We also suggested considering a remote parking lot with NRTA service, which operates frequently at the beginning and end of the work day. We wanted to encourage adding disabled parking spaces throughout the district, um, which would enable disabled residents and visitors to park closer to their homes. Um, we wanted to encourage the NRTA to coordinate its schedules to enable um, use at the ferries. Um, we thought that if there was uh, easier public um, transport at the ferries that we could reduce the cars that had to go down there in both places. Um, we wanted to ensure that yellow lines are clearly and appropriately painted to establish legal versus illegal street parking. Um, that happens to be something that's in, around my is an issue. Um, and then establish rules related to how much of the sidewalk a parked car can occupy. And we know that is a balancing act between we don't want cars out so far that they're blocking the street. But on the other hand, if they take up the entire sidewalk, um, it's really dangerous for people with or anybody on a wheelchair to go around the cars into the street. So we don't know what the answer is. The thing that needs to be thought about. It um, almost sounds like we need a street by street survey to determine, you know, what's possible in, in those situations. Yeah. Um, it, that may be needed. I'm sure that it's different in different situations. Um, Mickey, do you have the list in front of you? Do you want to go over the street lighting that was more in your purview? Well, I mean, it's relatively simple. Um, just basically, um, we, we said promote the use of historic lighting fixtures using LED bulbs of a warm color. And I think the town is actually looking into this already. So um, this is a good thing. And getting sort of historic looking um, new street lamps. And also just to make sure that we're all following dark skies. And I think they're sort of on that track also. So that shouldn't be a big stretch. And then back on the sidewalk issue, um, we suggested aggressively repairing uneven sidewalks and installing curb cuts where still needed. Um, we wanted consideration changing the utility wires where the poles obstruct the sidewalks. Um, so whenever a road or sidewalk is being re resurfaced, um, or at least installing conduits in the future for the future, um, and then building new sidewalks where there are arches on Prospect Street and Lowe Street. Reagan, can I jump in with a, sure. a spot? Uh, and, yeah. and Mickey, you might also be able to address this. Um, I know that there there's some latitude in. Um, in curb cuts and ADA accessibility when there's historic materials. You know, I, I'm by no means an expert on this, but what I was wondering if um, when, when those sidewalks are um, alongside asphalt roads, is it possible to put the ramp in the asphalt instead of putting the ramp in the sidewalk so that there's still, um, you know, a, a smooth surface for access to get from the sidewalk to the road, but the uh, the alterations made to the road surface rather than to the sidewalk surface when those materials are historic. Problem, I th if I understand what you're saying, Mary, is the, I think the problem with that is you can't have a ramp projecting out into the pave into the streetway because it would obstruct yeah. vehicles, bicycles, things like that. You can't have a a, a bump in the road, um, so it kind of has to be within the sidewalk layout beyond the curb, the interior of the curb. Um, and, you know, we've, most of downtown does have the proper curb cuts and they basically just take the granite curb usually and just sink it down at street level and then s kind of slope up the, um, the brickwork 
um, fan it out in a, appropriately in a, in a gentle slope. So that's usually not a problem. Um, sometimes it gets a little steeper than it, than it really should. And we just live with that. Um, do we do the best we can? Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, I wish, so Lee put a, a comment in the chat. The town is reluctant to paint spaces on sidewalks. And I'm unclear by what, by that, Lee. Um, the paint that I was referring to was on the street where it indicates where you can park along the street. But I don't know what, our ref, what you're referencing about painting on sidewalks. So when you have a chance, maybe you could type in the explanation and I'll read it. Uh, Lee also typed in minimum width must be maintained, and I assume that was in reference to sidewalks, uh, yeah, to ramps. But I, I just want to say that there's a real limitation to using the chat. It's it's not, um, you know, it's very difficult for Lee to respond. It's very difficult to insert his comments at the appropriate time. Uh, I'm sorry, Lee, that the audio is not working. I don't know what to do about that. Well, I can incorporate his comments into our written. Um, document. Um, so at least we'll get that part done, even if it's not in the public record. Um, okay, so we've covered sidewalks. The next thing we covered was noise issues. We wanted to encourage the NRTA to switch to quieter and cleaner electric vehicles um, as they replace vehicles. And we wanted to promote bylaws that require landscape companies to switch from noisy and polluting gasoline powered equipment to cleaner, quieter electric um, the neighborhood culture and preservation, we said support the continuing existing public services, which in exist in residential neighborhoods, such as restaurants, American Seasons and Woodbox were our examples, others in retail stores, churches, and historic properties open to the public, as well as educational institutions and group senior residences. So continue to support what's there but strongly oppose the expansion of any of the above businesses, such as in current bedroom and inns or the seating capacity in restaurants or a change in retail use that might increase the traffic generated by the current business use. And finally, um, we made a comment about the impact of flooding and sea rising, and we wanted to encourage the use of resilient construction guidelines in areas prone to flooding. Those were our suggestions and we uh, welcome um, edits and comments. And if there are areas that we didn't cover that we should have, we are certainly willing to do so. I guess I have a question and I don't have any answer for this. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is with, within our purview, but the stop and shop parking lot downtown is really uh, part of um, Nantucket Island Resorts owned by them. But the whole way that that parking lot is um, overseen is a huge problem. People, um, people who are going on and off island park there for weeks at a time. <laughs> and business people who are going on and off island park their trucks in that lot. And if you're uh, going to this downtown stop and shop with a car, good luck finding a space, even in the winter these days. So I don't even know if this is part of our consideration or not. It's not in our area. Okay. It's also private property. Yeah. It's an enormous problem. <laughs> it is. Agreed. <laughs> I'll bring up parking on the sidewalks. Um, According to mass law, there is none. That's why our chief doesn't enforce it. Yeah. So I don't know what we can do one way or the other on that. Well, I just, I mean, if there were, if the town were to encourage in some way or put sign it, you know, if there, I don't know what the solution is, because as I say, you know, I don't want cars taking up the road um, and I'm thinking specifically about Cliff Road since that's right in front of me and that's what I'm most aware of. But, um, but really there might as well not be a sidewalk because in order to walk up 
between houses, you have to walk outside of the cars and in the street. Yep. So I, no, I live on Gay. Um, we have like the water meter covers uh, disintegrate because of heavy trucks. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, the, they'll pull in and there's no way to get around it. So you, you've got to walk in the street. Um, under the area that I'm working on with Liz under natural and cultural resources, um, the accessibility or the lack thereof on the sidewalks, we have definitely listed that as a major issue for the museum um, for accessibility to get to any of the museums or their different properties. Uh, we met specifically with Michael Harrison, the curator for MHA. Um, and of course, I know from the years of work that I've done for the Museum of African American History on York Street, there is essentially no sidewalk to gain access to that museum. Uh -huh. And it's not fully open yet. It's been under restoration for eight years, but it is open. But there is no way to safely make your way um, to that museum. And, and so I'm just saying it that I know there are multiple issues that are occurring in the various areas that we're working on and sidewalks and accessibility is definitely, definitely a big one. And um, I would I know that I've, I've been told on York Street particularly that it's even a greater issue because the Nerda bus needs the width and that is its route. You know, India Street in comparison does not have the Nerda bus going down it. Um, but I agree about a, a survey to begin with to assess what works and what doesn't work because when you go down India Street, the cars are not parked on the sidewalk because of all of the, um, you know, the post, the horse, the horses. Um, and and I'm, I've been anxious to go and measure what is the width that's left and to go over to York Street and measure that out and say, well, if these cars parked on the street, I think the Nerda bus could get there, the same as that darn FedEx and the UPS buses go down India Street and all the India Street. They're no wider than the Nerda bus. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just saying it's a, it's a really big issue to make a good, I mean, um, one of the greatest things about a downtown urban area is its walkability. And it's not walkable. I mean, I walk it, and most of us do, but it's an issue. <laughs> the some of the trucks, and I'm certainly not pointing any fingers at any particular company or, or kind of truck, um, solve the problem by driving on the sidewalk, which you know negates the purpose of having a sidewalk to keep pedestrians out of the uh, path of travel of the cars. Um, and so we, we've got a, a really difficult situation. You, you, the only actual, I suppose, legal solution that I can imagine is to eliminate parking. And that's not a practical solution on the I mean, many streets that we have. I mean, those large trucks drive on the sidewalk when there are no horses to prevent them. They mm -hmm. don't drive on the sidewalk on India Street. They, they do, but on the opposite side. Yeah. So dri driving, not parking, but oh, driving. Right. That's why the India Street sidewalks are so collapsed is because they make a lot of heavy truck traffic. You know, I've, I've looked at this issue for quite a long time because of my role in the Commission on Disability for just the same reasons that March is mentioning. And, you know, York Street is narrower. And I think that my solution to York Street was just does not have parking right. at all on York Street. Most of the residences have their own driveways. So it's really shouldn't be completely um, required. So, you know, you, you can't walk up York Street on the sidewalk anywhere along it because there's somewhere there's going to be a car blocking you. So um, I think that, that that would be a prime example of a place that just plain have no parking on the street, period. But the other ones like India Street is just barely wide enough to allow cars to park in the street surface. 
um, and allow vehicle traffic to get by. And sometimes people park on the sidewalk anyway, if they can fit between those bollards. Fair Street's another example. Um, Henry, did, is, what is Gay Street? Does that have um, parking on the sidewalk? Yes. Yes. You've got Gay, Quince, and Hussey. Yeah, and they're all pretty narrow streets, which probably couldn't allow traffic to flow without parking on the sidewalk. So it's a, it's really a compromise, and I think the town really has to create a policy to prevent them par from parking just randomly in town where they really don't need to. So I think it's a good item. It's good item for our um, our area plan that the town needs to, to focus on this one. And you think it should be part of a survey? I, 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 why not throw it in on a survey? It wouldn't hurt. Um, I, I suspect you'd get a lot of responses about it. I mean, I, I would think that as part of, of this, um, the suggestions that maybe one could list a few of the streets and make some specific suggestions just to kind of really stir the pot and get them thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, to make some specific suggestions like you've made, like for York Street or, um, I, I, again, I'd be really interested to know what the actual dimensions are of what really does work, especially if you slow down. You know, I think Jack Gardner was, was onto this a while ago um, through the traffic safety work group and he, they mm -hmm. did a, um, they did a, somebody did a survey, it might have been Jack, and um, you know, the, the, it, an attempt was made to make, you know, to, 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 to deal with the issue in various ways. And it never stuck, it never got any traction and it just sort of dried up. So mm. I think it just needs to be reactivated. Somebody needs to bring it back up again and get it, get it on someone's agenda. Well, and I, mm. I, I'm not sure I'm, I wouldn't use the word survey. Um, and I don't know how this works, but what I think needs to happen if it hasn't already is, and somebody said this earlier, a street by street sort of evaluation of several items. So on, we want them to look at the sidewalk with the parking on the sidewalk, the uh, places where poles or other things obstruct the sidewalk that could be moved, um, not historical things. You know, all these things that we sort of mentioned, somebody needs to do a, a street by street analysis to then determine is there a universal answer or is there only a street by street answer or, you know, which is unfortunately for Nantucket, there's no blanket answer, but, um, and there may not be laws that can be passed, but perhaps there are um, town suggestions on certain streets. So I haven't had a chance to review what's going to happen to the parking lot on, was it on Silver or Eagle? I can't remember that right behind the African American Museum. That's usually completely rutted. And I know that there are plans. I just haven't had a, look at, had a chance to look at them. But if that became a Nerda stop where people knew they could park there easily and then just jump on the Nerda and make the final loop into town. I mean, that that's one way we could address both the the traffic and the parking, right? Because there, there are places that people can park. Like now we have the one on Washington Street, um, that sort of concierge piece, I don't know what they call that. Um, that, that, that there should be more options like that, where if someone is running into town, it's not gonna take them 45 minutes to park, wait for a bus and then get into town. So I don't know how that works, but has anyone had a chance to look at the Silver Street parking plan as an option? I think it's too small. I think it's it's pretty well jammed up throughout the day as it is. Well, many people park and walk into town from there. I don't know. I, I think that's just another, you know, it just there's needs to be an analysis and analysis and maybe, I mean, somewhat like the conservation society, whatever group buys up empty land for conservation purposes. We need somebody at the city sort of keeping their eye on where there are places outside of town that could be captured for remote parking in the future. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I, I think it needs to be a combination because I don't think you really can get a, a good analysis until you have a survey and understand what it is that you've got to analyze. But 
um, I definitely think that that would be a really good thing. Plus, I think, um, and we we talked about this, uh, Mickey and I last uh, at the last meeting, is that it, it would probably be a good thing to touch base with the the traffic safety work committee, whatever group that is, and check in with them on things that are that they're working on or have worked on and, and get a sense of that um, and get whatever support from that group we would need going forward too. So I, this is a procedural question. I am unclear about what our role and job is. And so I don't know whether you're suggesting that Mickey and I go meet with those people or whether we are suggesting that the town people go meet with those people. No, I, I don't know what our job is from here on. What do we right. do with all this information? Right, well, I mean, I understood that all of us as we we're tasked to do this work, that, that it was to the best interest of the outcome to have outreach individually, that, that we ourselves were to go out and seek input and feedback so that we would get a greater um, investment, you know, from people involved in our areas. Um, but okay. going forward, yes. There's nothing that we can do. So I would say that um, the committee has the option of bringing a guest, like we did with Leslie Snell, to talk to us about um, you know some of the realities that we may not individually be aware of, um, and certainly individually we can talk to whoever. But the the job of the committee as a whole is to produce a document that reflects the needs of the area that's defined, and has the support of the people in that area. Uh, or affected uh, by the plan, whether they, they work or live or rent or however they're involved. Um, but it's up to us to figure out how to do that. I don't think there's a, a prescription about, you know, steps one, two, three, four, five, and six to accomplish that. Okay, so if Mickey and I created a little um, survey of the topics and the proposed suggestions, we as a group could circulate it in our neighborhoods. Is that how it would happen? Well, I think we've discussed as a group producing a survey to oh. Oh. Um, okay, obtain community input on okay. the issues, but we would need to figure out what goes on the survey. Okay, so we would have a few topics for the survey. Right, yeah. Yeah. okay. Right. I think I was, um, talking about uh, you know a lesser um, engagement um, kind of with two task members going out um, you know like Liz and I met with uh, an NHA person we met with land bank person or whoever you know so that we're, we're not um, yeah violating any of the open meeting laws but we're, we're seeking some input and I think Mickey and I are scheduled to go and or, or trying to get to meet some of the housing people, you know, that have far more experience greater than we have to get that feedback. If, if and when we come up with a survey, it's gotta go through Andrew. It's we just can't, we just can't put a survey out. It's gotta go through the plus. Yeah. Yeah, we are we're an agents of the town, and so we should be channeling our efforts through the town's resources rather than um, rather than acting as an independent body. Yes, right. I guess what I was suggesting is suggesting in areas where we think some level of a survey that might be um, advantageous that that we give an example of what information we might be seeking on such a survey. So on a certain street, we might be seeking certain information just to kind of set up some guidelines as to what we're, what we're thinking will be useful. Well, let's clarify that we're talking about two different kinds of surveys. One would be, as Reagan said, an engineering analysis of the existing conditions is a survey, but a public opinion poll is also a survey. And so there may be some confusion about what, what each of us means when we use the word survey. Agreed. That, that's what I was trying to clarify. So the, what I understood is our committee as a whole will develop 
a proposed survey to get opinions of people in the neighborhoods. And we are suggesting that there needs to be an analysis of the conditions street by street by some entity. I'd be surprised if this hasn't already been done at some point. Yeah, me too. So we just need to find it and see what it says. Yeah, I think that, as I said, the traffic safety, there was a study done regarding at least street widths and, and sidewalk areas. So that, that should be out there. And I think that Alan Reinhardt has a lot of information on the sidewalk. So he might actually have a lot of this um, in, his, in his information too. So we can check with him. Yeah, Alan is chair of the Road and Right Away Committee. They, they may have information that we can um, look at for that. Yeah. Oh. Well, Lee's got it. Okay. Well, that's an interesting thing, Mary, that you bring up the, the, the roads and ways because I wonder if under this area, services and facilities and uh, we should be, if there are any areas in our area map that have to do with rights of way. But we, we also have a transportation section that, that Lee and I worked on. Um, right. so, and obviously there's overlap between all of these, but uh, mm -hmm. I would assume that if you're gonna get that specific, well, I know transportation is a movement. Um, you know, it, it's hard to tell what section it would be under. Yeah, because actually I'm thinking of the, the different areas that are controversial, like that might also be in the recreation um, area because where you have access that's been, um, you know, overgrown that we don't really know, say on Hulbert Avenue, all of those rights of ways that exist for the general public to gain access to the beach. Um, I don't those know. Are, those are marked, uh, Marcia. Every one of those little paths to the beach are marked. No, I know they're Our marked. Culture. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to find the mark. <laughs> yeah, okay. Road and Right of Way Committee has done quite a lot over the last couple of decades to mark public ways and to um, notify the town when they are not maintained to in order to get them back into uh, useful capacity. Um, so I think that we could definitely benefit from having a session with the Road and Right of Way Committee to, um, to help identify specific areas where we can support their recommendations for increased access to public ways. Um, I think that makes sense within the context of the plan. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm just referring to maintenance where a right of way is 15 feet in width and maybe the path is is 30 inches wide, you know, and you really don't know. So anyway, it's just a thought that might be under services and facilities, but I don't know where that would fall. Are there any in the, uh, in our area? Uh, Stone Alley. Oh. Ah, Pretty Stone. well marked but not maintained that the actual, as Marcia pointed out, you know, we've got 24 inches there to squeeze through when we really have several feet at least of uh, you know, access that we should have. Yeah, that's a good one. Has the town taken that over yet? But there was some discussion, I think at our last meeting or the one before that it's, it's the status is questionable. Um, I, I would have thought that the town took it two centuries ago, but yeah, what I think doesn't count, so. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. Um, one of the other questions I have about the first area, the parking issues impacting residents um, is, um, and this hasn't, I understood um, from another resident on Liberty Street that they're year round residents and they were in order to have, that they were putting out a lot of money for the fees for the right to park 
in front of their house on the street. And so if there were two or three cars that were people that were living in the house, and, and I'm not certain about that, but I just feel that if you are a resident of the downtown and you're living here year round, that is a great asset to the community. And to have to pay all this money in order to park a car, um, again, I'm not really certain. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm sorry, go ahead, Marsha. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, that if you didn't have off-street parking and you had to park on the street that you had to pay for the resident oh. parking permit. Well, that, it's been it's a while since I've been paying for it, but the fee is nominal. It's, you know, it's $50. Yeah, and, and nobody has a right to park in front of their house. It's public parking. Oh, no, I understand that. But if you have, that can be 150 to $200 if you have. I, I can't see the cost for a complaint. <laughs> that, that money buys you greater access to that space. I don't think it's outrageous. Yeah, I, I could just mention it that it was definitely a hardship for this particular family. So, yeah. But if you own four cars, how much of a hardship is it really? Yeah. Well, if they're four adults, right? It was a hardship, so that's all I can say. <laughs> I'm sure they perceived it that way. Hmm. Okay, well, that's our, that's our report, Henry. Um, so tell us what you want us to do next and we'll do it. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of discussion on everything. Um, but thank you. Um, do we want to discuss um, surveys? How broad do they, we want them to be? Um, I'm not sure length is, is good because when you get into a long survey, you tend to lose interest. But it, it's something if you want to discuss, we can do it. We've got time. I, I did send Henry a note. Uh, I watched the Madiket area plan uh, January meeting. I think it was January. Um, and they had an extensive discussion about surveys. Uh, so if, if people are interested, it, it was a really good um, discussion. They covered a lot of ground. Um, I, I'd encourage you to go to the town's YouTube site and watch that Madiket area plan uh, meeting. They want to make quite a few zoning changes, is my understanding. Madigan. Yeah, I don't. I don't know off the top of my head. Um. So, what were the surveys um, for? What categories? Or yeah, in general, what were they? About? It can be whatever we want. Um, Sidewalks, I think, should definitely be in there. Um, I forget who presented it, but uh, small businesses in the resident or in the old historic, uh -huh. that should be in there, I would think. Um, try and get some feedback because whatever we present, um, I think we ought to have backing. So what if we asked each of the seven areas to come up with three questions that mm -hmm. uh, they would want the, to be presented to the public in order to gauge support for a position that they're proposing. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, excellent. And I'm happy to do some of the legwork on that. Were you thinking of using what is it, Survey Monkey or? Uh, well, I'll check with the planning department and see if, if they have any tools that that they you know already subscribe to and can use. Yeah. Um, Mary, you sent us all a copy of the Sconset survey, which was very comprehensive. Yeah. Long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they, well, it's, it's interesting. Um, both Madiket and Sconset have 
a large number of people in their community who are very heavily engaged in, in the process of defining their communities. And that's a little bit harder in the town. Um, I, I think somebody noted that the town has a lot of different little neighborhoods in it. So somebody living on the cliff is not affected by the same issues as somebody living on Fair Street. Right. And, you know, so it, it's, we may not see that same high level of engagement. So Henry's caution about having a survey that's too big is probably well taken. But you know, three questions each out of seven areas would be 21 questions. It shouldn't be too, uh, too much of a burden. But yeah, I was, I was really impressed by the participation in the Sconset survey. It's amazing. All right, anything else? It's pretty quiet. <laughs> I was gonna say, I have to jump off in a minute. So I, All right. I, I hope I won't, I, if, every, if we're done, I won't miss anything. Yeah, no, you won't. Thank you, Reagan. Okay, thank you all. But we need a motion to adjourn before Reagan jumps off. Um, okay, we can do that. Well, hmm. do we have a, another meeting scheduled? Yes, we have a regular schedule. Is it every first it's, Tuesday and third Friday? Is that it? Yes. Yeah, okay. You're right. So could we request um, the sign in? Um, I'll see what I can do, Marcia, to send reminders, yes. <laughs> I had that thought at the beginning of the meeting, but thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, that would be helpful for sure. Yeah, yeah it's the same login. Mm -hmm. Well, I tried, but I couldn't get in. <laughs> but who knows? Me too. Okay, I move adjournment. Do we have a second? Or Sorry, Henry, that's your line. <laughs> that's okay. Mary, do you second? I'll second. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All in favor, aye. 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 Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Yeah, but Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Stop recording, Mary. Yep. And thank you.